So hi everyone, today I'll present Fast Plan. This is a formal approach to standard update plans for runtime program all devices. Uh, it is a joint work between Rice University and Microsoft. So in recent years, we have witnessed the rapid growth of P4-based applications ranging from security to monitoring and offloading. And as a recent advance, uh, now devices are becoming runtime programmable with various uh, industry and uh, academic hardware products being developed. So this new trend marks a major paradigm shift for the entire P4 ecosystem, in that instead of reloading the entire hardware to reflect some problem changes, these new devices support partial, recon partial reconfiguration, which allows you to update your P4 program while the device keeps on running. And many research works have focused on how to build such runtime programmable systems, such as FastCore and RP4, both from NSDA last year. And at the high level, their roadmap are quite similar in that you take in the old version of P4 program and update the new version of P4 program, and these tools will analyze their differences and generate the so-called update data and use that to partially re reconfigure the devices and that is keep on running. <coughs> However, this benefit of runtime programmability also comes with uh, certain risks. Let me show this with a simple instance of P4 update. So within this very simple code snippet, we are trying to update the echo tables to support network address translation. So essentially, we are trying to delay the yellow tables that are doing echo, and we are trying to add the green uh, new tables which are trying to do NACO, net and echo at the same time. So in the hardware, uh, you start with the state where you have the yellow old tables, and you end with the, the state where you have the green new tables. The most naive update plan is just to update everything all at once. This sounds nice, but however, the problem here is that if you do this, it will invoke a huge resource spike during the update. And in many cases, it will break the resource cap of the device, uh, in which case the update will fail. Which means that when, uh, like update everything all at once are not always feasible. A naive fix to this problem is that you know, we can kind of partition the one step update into multiple steps of uh, smaller transactions. So for example, within each transaction, you only change one table rather than like all, the, all of them. Um, this will definitely reduce the resource spike, but the problem here is that it will invoke a lot of uh, intermediate states where your device logic is different from both the old and the new version of the P4 program. And without careful consideration, such intermediate states could cause severe safety or consensus violations. It is also very, uh, like vital importance for us to regulate these intermediate states with some guarantees. So the key question is how to generate other plans that conform with all of those constraints we just mentioned. Uh, outside of the box of just uh, manually trial and error, we have two possible approaches here. So the first one that is um, uh, adapted by existing work um, is uh, graph analysis. So basically at the high level, the view um, uh, represent all the people from updates using the so-called problem update graph and invoke certain graph reachability analysis to check properties at the runtime. <coughs> The problem with this approach is that, for one thing, it completely abstracts away all the P4 problem semantics, which are essential for us to explore better update plans. Moreover, it cannot support user-defined specifications because it can only reason about fixed consistency levels uh, that could be expressed by some ad hoc graph algorithms. The other relevant line of work is P4 application, which takes in the P4 problem logic and some user-defined safety specifications, then invoke the SMT solving to find potential violations within the P4 logic. This is quite attractive in that it could reason about both the P4 problem semantics and the user requirements. However, we cannot directly apply P4 application to our problem in that, uh, for one thing, we need to reason about problem update, while P4 application only reason about update, you know, individual programs. <laughs> and moreover, our task is on the side of synthesis, while people verification is only verifying properties. So to solve all these challenges, we have the LFS plan. This is a formal approach to generate update plans that are both safe under the consistency guarantees and feasible with respect to the uh, device resource constraints. So the user will like, express their intent on the update using our annotation-based abstraction and express their requirement using our spec language. FlexPM will then take both as inputs and go through a sequence of program implementations, finally reaching the update synthesis engine, which is in charge of generally update plans that are correct. Upon failures, this tool will also do diagnosis and find potential uh, root causes and suggest possible improvements. So, 
With the high-level roadmap of uh, FlexPlan in mind, we can now move on to our first technical discussion, which is FlexPlan spec language that supports a lot of consistency guarantees. So by consistency, what it means essentially is that uh, we can guarantee certain equivalence relationship across all the intermediate states, as well as the old and new version of the P4 program during the update. I'll show this through very simple example of specification. So, at the very beginning, we can uh, create two ghost variables and call them so old and so new. So you can think of ghost variables as hidden metadata that will be later instrumented into the logic for further processing. And with the definition of these ghost variables, we can now define how to update them at runtime. So what happens is that, uh, in this case, we will update so old to true if we encounter any old P4 com program component on its execution path. And we will set some new to true similarly if we encounter any new components on the execution path of people logic. And with all of this information, it's not very straightforward for us to define some like, uh, assertions. For example, if you can define that for no IP4 package should mix old and new logic. And here is how we do this. So we can define that for any, IP, you know, any packet, if it's uh, IP4 at ingress, that egress, the value of it is so old and so new, cannot be true at the same time, because otherwise it means that you have a mixture of old and new logic on its execution path. <coughs> this is what we refer to as the execution consistency for IPv4. And similarly, you can define many other types of uh, consistency or safety con uh, specifications, typically within several lines of code in our tool. So with this in mind, we can now move on to how FlexPlan translated the problem update, update plan generation into a problem synthesis problem. So we are highly inspired by the line of work on problem sketching, um, which, has, which is uh, active line of work for many years. Right? So the basic idea is very simple. So given uh, like a code snippet with some sketching holes to fill, as marked by these uh, green question marks, <coughs> the job is for you to fill them with concrete values so that the completed program satisfies or complies with some specifications. Our task is a little bit different from problem sketching in that we are not trying to generate programs directly, but rather we are trying to generate intermediate states and eventually the in entire update plan. So for that purpose, we have developed a so-called version sketch, uh, where we use a version number of each changing P4 problem components as sketching holes, and we are using the concrete value of those sketching holes as version control variables that control which part of the logic we run during the update. <laughs> and with this, we can basically represent the arbitrary intermediate state that is possible to write during the update. However, this is merely the first step of our implementation, because eventually, we need to represent the entire update plan, which always starts with the old version of the PFR program and end up with the new version of the PFR program where all the sketching holes take the value new. Right? With an indefinite number of intermediate states in the middle that is trying to make some progress from the old program to the new program. And this is what we refer to as a sequence sketch. <coughs> it is it's, it's trying to represent the entire possible other plans and with a sequence of version sketches. And it's the actual input to our latest synthesis engine. <coughs> so now to the part of our synthesis um, paradigm. So, the whole idea is that you take in the specification and the sequence sketch we just seen, and we invoke sages or count example get an inductive synthesis. Um, the idea itself is very simple. So the synthesis at, at, at the beginning phase will try to generate some initial guess on feasible solutions, which we call the candidate plans. Note that these candidate plans are not guaranteed to be correct with respect to the consistency guarantees we just um, specified. So it's not the job of the verifier to validate their, validate their correctness. And uh, in the case of failures, the verifier will generate counting examples and send them back to the synthesizer to cut down the search space. So in our case, the count examples would be concrete packets that trigger certain violations. This loop will only uh, end if the verifier agrees with a certain candidate plan at the end of the day, or the synthesizer uh, runs out of possible options. However, note that um, you know, FastPlan is by no means a direct application of stages in that we have a lot of domain uh, specific challenges to solve. So for one thing, you know, synthesizing a single problem is already hard enough, but we need to synthesize a sequence of snapshots, which are even harder. And similarly, we have the problem for verification, how to scale verification. Moreover, how to terminate the loop as soon as possible, and how to react to failures in case there is no such viable update plans. Due to time limits, I'll only focus on a subset of these challenges. So let's first take a deeper look at um, the 
scalability bottleneck fixed by the synthesizer. So essentially, the synthesizer is trying to generate newer and newer candidate plants based on the feedback from the verifier. And in this case, it's actually trying to learn from the candidate plant that failed in the past. The problem, however, is that during this process of learning, both the synthesizer and the verifier need to reason with the entire field update plan. And this is very costly. The good news is there. <laughs> so basically, if you look at the root cause of these violations, it will always go down to like an individual snapshots or interme individual intermediate states within the field update plan that cause violation. So in theory, the synthesizer should be able to directly reason with the field snapshots rather than the entire update sequence. This has led us to the implementation of the so-called snapshot learner, which uh, generates snapshot violations directly and extracts the key information using a form of unset core learning and then feeds the learn violation constraints directly back to the synthesizer to cut down the search space. And as I mentioned again, the basic idea is that we can learn from individual snapshots rather than the entire update sequence. The other thing that is very interesting is how to do early loop termination. So by default, the synthesizer will always start with trying the shortest possible uh, update plan. And only in case it finds it's impossible to generate anything concrete with the current lens, it will try to enlarge the sequence sketch. This will only end if at the end of the day there is a feasible update plan out there. However, in many cases, such a valid plan just do not exist. And in that case, no matter how long you try for the sequence sketch, you will never be able to find something that is valid. And in that case, it's very bad for the synthesizer because you need to exhaust the entire search space in order to uh, con conclude that it is impossible to continue. <laughs> so the real question is how to terminate or early terminate this loop in case the search is doomed to fail. So for regular seizures, this is a fundamental problem that is impossible to solve. But for our um, domestic specific uh, like, uh, approach, we have developed this very novel introspection mechanism that could, that could do diagnosis before exhausting the entire search space. So in this case, the introspection mechanism will tell the synthesizer to deepen the search at the very beginning, and then at a later stage, it will tell the synthesizer to stop and terminate. And for the technical details of uh, this approach, please refer to our paper for more details. So we have implemented a prototype of FastPlay and open sourced it, and we have done a lot of case studies on various P4 programs like uh, Switch.P4, um, both randomly and manually crafted program updates. So in the rest of the talk, I'll try to answer some, some evaluation questions, such as do the specs generate uh, granular update plans, and do our optimizations tackle the scalability problems? <laughs> so in this figure, we have four curves, which are representing like four different specifications expressed by our spec language. And the x-axis is the program update ratio, while the y-axis is a, uh, a peak resource spike. As you can see, different specifications have vastly different resource spike during the update. For example, the green curve down below with the lowest resource spike is what we refer to as the L2, L3 field consistency, which only makes sure the following behavior as well as L2, L3 packet header fields are consistent during the update. <laughs> This is weaker than some of the other consistency levels, but it's still helpful and uh, uh, give us like a great resource reduction. The other thing that is interesting is uh, scalability versus optimizations. So in this figure, we can see that with higher and higher update ratios, it definitely leads to longer and longer completion times. So like it's saying that it's definitely true that with uh, the scalability problem, it's, it's real out there. Moreover, if you look into each group of uh, the figure, <coughs> We are gradually applying more and more uh, optimizations from right to left, and you can see there's a reduction on the completion time of the synthesis approach. So this means that applying optimizations could reduce completion time uh, of our uh, fast plan to, uh, like directly. So in summary, uh, we have a proposed fast plan. This is a formal approach to general update plans that are both safe and feasible. It is a hardware agnostic update plan generation framework that allows you to define your own runtime consistency requirements. And it provides formal guarantee that if there is a valid update plan, we'll fund it. And if we fund the update plan, then it's definitely cracked. So this is the rest of the talk. Thanks a lot for your attention. I'm open to all more questions. <laughs>